Hello and welcome again to another tutorial video from Basic Fishing. Now it has been a while since I've done a tutorial video, but since I was able to find time, I decided to make one. Now, lately in most of my videos, I've been doing lots of surf casting non-stop, and it has been an enjoyable experience, especially with some of the catches I was able to land. For today's video, I want to share with everybody some good tips and tricks on the baits I consider to be the best when surf casting. So I hope you learn on why I think these are the top five baits for surf casting. I also hope that this video will help you land some of the elusive fish you are after as well. First bait, the bullet tuna. Ever since this was first showcased in Big Angry Fish, I was keen on trying it out. But most tackle owners said to me that it was more suitable for the boat. But after trying it many times, I can say it's one of the best baits to use for surf casting. This is basically a skipjack tuna in the size of a pilchard. And compared to a pilchard, the bullet tuna is much tougher, has more oil and high blood contents, which attracts all species of fish, including the tasty snapper. In fact, other than landing a few gurners with this bait, I had some interesting results while shark fishing with this bait. I had a kawai whose stomach was much bigger than his mouth, which was safely released. Then recently, I managed to land one of my best catches off the beach, a large kingfish, which I tried to catch on dead bait for well over a year. This goes to show that the bullet's blood and oil can make a difference on some days. Not to mention, despite using a small size bait, it was enough for me to get hooked into a large bronze whaler shark, until sadly I got snapped off. With bullet tuna in the size of a pilchard, it is easy to manage the amount of bait you need to take, which reduces wastage. In fact, two bullet tuners plus other baits are more than enough for my surf casting sessions. Also, instead of carving out a large skipjack tuner for the more favorable parts of the fish, you can utilize the bullet tuner with minimum wastage. For example, I can simply use large fillets for edible species without having to cut off any excess meat. For shark fishing, I use half of a bullet tuner and cut out cutlass baits and tie them on together, which makes an effective bait for sharks of all species. It's also a bait that can be bought from tackle stores very easily as well. However, it is a soft bait, so make sure to tie it on to the hook to prevent it from falling off too easily. Another thing I should mention is that bullet tuna is also great to use if you want to catch them bait fish on a sibiki as well. For tougher skin, and much oilier flesh, this will attract the small bait fish, which can be used as live bait. The next bait in the list is the grey mullet. This fish is one of the most prolific species, especially in harbour areas, but it's also a great bait to use in any locations. I had a lot of success using this bait for all species of fish, and one of my best catches with this bait from the beach are nine pound snappers, which definitely took me by surprise. But along with snappers, I also landed large kawais, lots of gurnets, and several sharks, which consists the seven gill, the school shark, and some occasion, the rig shark as well. The mullet is not just abundant, which makes it a great food source for all fish, but it's also super oily and very tough. This makes it hard for the picker to strip off the bait fast, but the whole fish itself is also very versatile as well. Half a mullet is a potential shark bait depending on how hungry they are. Strips of baits can be cut up into suitable proportions for the hook, along with the species you wish to target, and the guts are also great to use for bait as well. Another good thing about the mullet is that it's so easily accessible, especially fresh, and one whole fish will usually be enough when fishing for edible species, depending on how large a bait is. Unlike a skipjack tuna or bullet tuna which is soft as butter, the mullet is very tough and will stay on the hook and survive the casting. 
Next bait in the list is the crayfish tail. Now this is definitely one of the most expensive baits out there, but it's an ideal bait to use in shark infested waters. And if you only wish to target those edible species, this is one of many baits to use. One of the most common species of fish I had landed with this bait is the elusive spotted smooth hound, also known as spotted rig or lemon fish. This species of shark feeds primarily on crustaceans, especially crabs. But the crayfish tail also helps to attract other species of fish like kawai and snapper. One of my oldest catch I was able to make on a crayfish tail was a mouse-sized kingfish, which not only pulled surprisingly hard for its size, but was also released to fight for another day. This bait I've got to use for a while, and so far I was very impressed on the bait itself. Compared to most baits like a mullet or pilchard, this bait is relatively light, so this will allow you to get a huge distance in your casting without any form of compromise. It can be cut up into different sizes depending on your hook size, but just be aware that this is a soft bait, so you need to tie it onto the hook well before casting it out. But speaking of soft, this bait was relatively firm, especially comparing it to mussels or pippies. So tying this bait onto the hook is not too difficult. The one problem I did experience with this bait is that it can go off very easily, especially when you defrost it and use it again on the next trip. So make sure to plan your fishing trip and only take the amount you need to prevent unnecessary wastage. But in general, freezing and defrosting your bait multiple times reduces the quality anyway. If crayfish baits are too expensive for you or too unusual, our cheaper alternatives are prawns. And now the bait I consider to be at the very top for surf casting, tua tours or pippies. Now this to me is no doubt the best bait to use when surf casting anywhere from the shore. Compared to mussels or cockles, for some reason the tua tour seems to get the fish really biting. In nature, it is one of the most common food source for most fish, particularly from the sand. And this can really avoid the unwanted species like the sharks. There are days where I cast out small piece of mullets, and it's enough for the sharks to go crazy and bite the trace off, which isn't ideal. The tua tua bait is really great to use when targeting edible species like snapper, trevally, and gurnard. In fact, I managed to land a decent sized snapper from the shore with the tua tua, plus landed my personal biggest trevally from the beach as well. And let me tell you, those large trevallies are epic fighters, even on surf casting gears. The only problem I have with this bait is that it's so hard to find a place where they sell them. They used to sell them in bulk in supermarkets, but the last time I saw them was sold in 2005, and only recently I was able to find a beach where they had them, but just because they are there, I'm not sure if they'll be there again the next time I go. So wherever you go people, always make sure to check your regulations to um, protect the shellfish beds and also tidy up the beach as shellfish are quite sensitive to um, any dirty water and they can be poisoned very easily. The final bait I consider to be great to use for surf casting, especially if you wish to target bigger edible species, then here it is, live bait. This is obviously a different category compared to the other baits I had listed out, but live bait deserves the top spot. Yes, compared to the dead bait, live bait obviously requires much more attention, as you need to make sure that you have the ability to catch the live bait that is much needed. Keeping them alive long enough to fish with and have the right outfit to help you to land that monster sized fish. However, when it's all done correctly, the efforts can reward you greatly. One of my biggest fish landed on live bait is a large long tail stingray. 
and my most unusual is a hammerhead shark, which were both released back unharmed. And after working hard for so long, I was finally rewarded with an undersized kingfish that took a live yellow-eyed mullet, which was also released back to live for another day. There are so many species of bait fish that can be used as live bait, but the most common species to use from the shore is the yellow-eyed mullet and small kawaii. However, on some days, just getting the live baits themselves can be the hardest part, so always make sure to have some spare dead bait, just in case you don't catch that much needed live bait. So many species of fish with teeth or large mouth will definitely go after the live baits, which includes sharks, but other fish such as snapper, kawaii, and kingfish will also take the liveies, and usually in bigger sizes. So always make sure you are well prepared before using this type of bait. Live bait unfortunately won't always guarantee you that big fish that you definitely need to work hard for. But on the right day and after a while, you will be rewarded, especially if you keep at it and learn as you go. I definitely had a lot of tough days where one day it was very successful and several trips later it was just repetition repetition of the same failure over and over again just remember people that even though if you don't catch the fish one thing that you will take away from experiences is the memories and the knowledge so the next time you go out doing this again you will remember what to do next along with have other backup plans that will ensure that you will find better time to land that monster fish you are after. I hope everyone has enjoyed this video and if you have, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more fishing videos. If you know anyone who may need help with fishing or wants to learn, make sure to share this video with them as well. Again, thank you for watching and see you all next time.